Hi everyone, Sajid Amit here and welcome to a full review of the Dita Perpetua, which is flying under the radar. So in this review, I'll talk a bit about the Perpetua, of course, the sound. I'll talk a bit about its unboxing because I think, although I've done a separate video on the unboxing, it might help those of you just trying to make a buying decision to have everything in one video. I will answer the question I've raised in the title of my YouTube video, which is, why this reminds me of a $50,000 jack from DCS. And I'll talk about sources I've driven this with, including the Diablo, which is a very powerful source. The Sony W1ZM2, which is my go-to DAP, as you'll know by now if you followed my channel. And the Evergreen Hugo 2. Okay, so first of all, the Perpetua sound does remind me of the $50,000 DCS Vivaldi Apex jack. Because it's of a huge enveloping relaxing sound now i've always liked dacs i was in the more headphone portion of the hobby as some of you will know and i've loved dac rolling especially once i got like highly resolving headphones like the Suzvara and the abyss and the stacks headphones in the stacks headphones in particular i do want to mention change a lot of their presentation profile depending on what dac you have on the chain so the base impact of Stacks headphones do change a lot depending on what DAC you have in the chain. So in that sort of pursuit of trying to find the right DAC for the X9000, I once stumbled upon the DCS DACs, the DCS Rossini and the DCS Vivaldi. And I'll drop a link to my first impressions video of the DCS Rossini and the DCS Vivaldi, both the Apex version, which is like, you know, the newer version, which is, you know, better built. Not better built in terms of its physical construction, of course, but it's got the Apex tech. And um, I was blown away, guys. What was interesting for me is that when you went from a $30,000-ish dollar DAC, like the DCS Rossini, which was super resolving, it was just so well layered, and I was listening to a Stax X9000, and I've never heard the music be as layered as, I, as was the case during that session. And then I moved on to the Vivaldi, which is even more expensive, at $46,500, and it was all there. It was the resolution was there, the layering was there, but just somehow things were coming at a more no, I, I don't want to use the word languid, just at an ever so slightly more relaxed pace, which made listening just ever so sli slightly less fatiguing and ever so slightly intoxicating. Even MSB DAX remind me of that sort of performance. So with that segue, so that is why I've titled my review as, you know that this $3,000 IEM does remind me of these high-end DACs, in particular the Vivaldi from DCS, because this has a huge, engulfing, relaxing sound. So I'm not using it with the stock cable. Its stock cable is nice enough, and I'll show you the stock cable and what it looks like, but this, just by way of a quick shout out, is from Noble Audio. It is the Prestige Series cable. I'm quite certain you cannot yet buy this from their website, Maybe you can ask them about it, but they do, they are, you know, launching it. Um, it's a nicely crafted copper cable with like these wooden splitters. I love the texture of the wood and this wooden jack even. So that is my go-to cable for the Dita Perpetua. The Perpetua is built like a beautiful masterpiece. So these are PVD coated titanium, teardrop shaped, so if the shape is something that you're concerned about, if you have not, you know, ever tried the shape in your ears, this is where I can actually go on a limb, go out on a limb and say that the shape will not be uncomfortable. It is highly, highly comfortable and ergonomic. It just fits my ears like a glove. And every person who's tried this at CanJam Singapore had the same thing to say. Uh, so as a matter of fact, this could be perhaps an even more ergonomic shape than the sort of shape we're used to with like, you know, these... Um, bulging multi-driver setups like we you know tend to put in our ears so this is a very ergonomic shape ergonomic design it's a very premium looking feeling i am um pvd coated titanium like i said the face plate is made out of sapphire glass where the logo is showing through so it's not picturing as well as i hope it would but it's a beautiful i am guys it's sturdy it's just it's eye-catching it's light it's, it's really really stunning it's got 12 millimeter dynamic drivers inside a single dd as you'll know so yeah that's for as far as the build and construction goes 
Sonically, because you know I said it's relaxing, you might not be surprised if I said that it doesn't have the highest amount of pinna gain, which is just perfect. Because I like pinna gain on some IMs, but not on, not on others. So this does fulfill the beautiful use case of having a relaxed listen. So this is when I have a very tough day at work. I don't gravitate towards the Odin's. I do not gravitate gravitate towards like really bassy IMs either, like the for Audio Xenon Six. I gravitate towards this. But because I am a bit of a closet bass head, just a little bit, I still get the bass rumble and impact here from the single DD, which is just beautiful. So the way I would describe the tuning is that it's got a bass shelf. It is a prominent bass shelf without being an enormous bass shelf like, let's say, the Legend Evo or even the For Audio Xenon 6 or the KR5. But it's got a clear bass shelf, very balanced lower and middle mid bass. So very nice glide into the mid-range, a flat mid-range until it reaches around 2 to 3 kilohertz. So it does have a pinna gain, but it's a nice gentle slope. And treble is beautiful. There is a bit of a 5k in the graph, which has never bothered me in real life off my Sony W1 ZM2, which has only in one song with volume turned up on the bright and analytical Hugo 2 made its presence felt. Which is to say that do not buy products on the basis of graphs, you'll see that Summit buyers or flagship collectors, people who are buying expensive stuff with the wonkiest tunings, so that's the other extreme, people who are buying stuff with the wonkiest tunings, but you'll see that a lot of people who have massive IM collections or even like medium-sized IM collections don't listen to graphs as much. Somehow, I feel like people who are not afraid to take risks don't listen to or look at graphs as much. And that I think is cool. And these are these guys are not idiots by any stretch of the imagination. I think it's more idiotic to put a graph out there and let that graph bias your perception of the sound because that does happen. A lot of time people and some reviewers will put a graph out there and describe the graph to you. And a lot of us think, oh, that's so cool because that person is scientific and that is just the best way to understand them than I am. And we, we just give more credence and credibility to someone who has got a graph and a graph is critical. Without a graph, I wouldn't have made sense of this as much as I have. A graph is something that we love. Like I have a mathematics background, so I love graphs. That being said, a lot of IMs will not sound the way they graph. In fact, I don't think any IM will sound exactly the way it graphs. There's coupler resonance, there's your ear anatomy, there's a whole bunch of other things which have to be taken into account. And so that's that. And so something like this also has just the most phenomenal timbre. And timbre just doesn't come from a graph, guys. Even a lot of mainstream reviewers still insist that yes, you can use a frequency response to figure everything out, like resolution even, or timbre, and that's just a lot of crap. And I will drop a link to a pretty serious academic paper that talks about what timbre comes from. And even these academics are confused. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past some you know, novice engineer or what, whatever a lot of reviewers are to be, you know, uh, uh, not know what he or she is talking about when they're talking about how timbre can be explained with the graph. Of course, the tuning profile will have an effect on timbre, so that is the case here. It is a mellow tuning, so you get a sense of a sort of a mellow timbre, but a timbre is basically what allows you to distinguish between different instruments, right? So for example, if you play the same lead solo on lead guitar, you could play it on a piano, or you could play, on, play the same sort of melody on two different instruments that sound very similar two different types of drums, two different types of wind instruments, right? And you could, till, you could still tell apart these two instruments. So that is basically what timbre is. It's like the flavor or the color of that instrument. This does timbre exceedingly well. I want to say that the timbre here reminds me of the timbre of the HD650 even. And I've talked about this in reviews. This is a timbral king. Um, so that's another reason why I like it. I do want to say that the base performance of this IM will vary greatly on what you're driving this with. So if you're driving this off a Sony W1 ZM2, which is one of my favorite pairings, I do get a phenomenal sense of timbre because this is one of the best DAPs out there when it comes to timbre and it does pair really well with the Dita Perpetua. So I just want to put it out there. The bass sounds impactful, but I do EQ the bass to bring it out more. Once I switch it to the Diablo of low gain, the eco mode, and, and uh, I can go, you know, up to, let's say, here in volume. 
Uh, the bass starts slamming like crazy, but I lose out the, on the tightness and cohesiveness and the tamaral prowess of the sound because this is not as expensive and, and prices do matter because in this case, what's happening is the sound just sounds more digital. Not digital at, at an absolute level, but digital compared to what the Perpetua should sound like because this presentation is a bit uh, 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 soulless, I think. The Higo 2, however, uh, makes things right. And with this, you get timbre. This, with this, you get resolution, more resolution than you ever get with any other source that I've tried. So with this, the Perpetua is scarily resolving. It's resolving at the sort of $3,000 price level that you expect it to be. It's wide, it's layered, it's still relaxing. It does come alive just a bit, so it's more relaxing on my Sony W1 ZM2, but it's still a relaxing sound. And the bass hits hard. Bass rumbles, slam factor is just through the roof, and then it can't even satisfy bass heads. So that's worth keeping in mind. This single dynamic driver is more bassy than the Turi, Turi Ti, the Turi Titanium from Soft Ears. It's got better mid-range than Turi Ti. The Turi Ti does have more extended and sharp and analytical treble. The Turi Ti is bright for me. It's fatiguing for me. And I don't listen to a lot of jazz and classical. So if you do, the Turi Ti might be your boat. As one of my friends, Hi-Fi Hawaii from Hetfi mentioned, it could be an endgame IM for jazz and classical, but honestly for nothing else. The, the Turi Ti is not what you go to if you like modern genres. That I can say with a lot of confidence. Guys, why is this I am my desert island pick when I have these other five IMs, five IMs here? It is my top five, but why would I pick this? I would pick this because as far as my preferences go, these do, this I am does almost nothing wrong and does the most amount of things right, the Perpetua. So let me just quickly talk about what this does that others don't. And also I should talk about what others do that this doesn't. Okay, so starting with the Jewel, the Irma Audio Jewel is, of course, I think the most resolving IM I have in this table or on this uh, IM. So I should talk about this IM carrying case. This is from Effect Audio. It's really, really awesome. Um, so this is the Aroma Audio Jewel, and it is a fantastic IM that I've loved and enjoyed, and it's perhaps one of my top two top IM. Uh, so the reason why um, the Aroma Audio Jewel wouldn't be my Desert Island pick is because while it's more resolving than the Dita Perpetua, it's perhaps technically better. It is a $5,200 IM. I just wouldn't carry an expensive IM, a $5,200 IM to my desert island sort of, you know, uh, getaway. It's just too expensive. I do think it's a better IM than the Dita Perpetua. Don't get me wrong. I'm not particularly biased towards the Perpetua. However, I also, I think, would need that relaxed sort of listen if I was stranded on an island, right? Uh, if I was just, or if I was relaxing on an island, I, I just feel like this goes with an island vibe. It's a very relaxing sound. And that's why I would take the Perpetua to an island over the Aroma Audio Jewel. I wouldn't take the Odins to an island because although I love the Odins, they are very source picky. They're very cable picky. They can sound bright at the wrong sources. They can sound bright on different tracks. And I wouldn't want to, you know, I wouldn't want the hassle of, trying to, you know, amp roll or dap, adapt roll or cable roll with the Odin's when on an island. It is more resolving, but it's slightly more fatiguing. So that's another reason why I wouldn't take the Odin ahead of the Perpetua. The Fur Audio Xenon 6 would be a close, you know, a, you know, a sort of a close contender to be taken on a desert island. It is warm and inviting and thumpy and bassy and all that. But it's just still, at the same time, not as relaxing as the Perpetua, I think. And finally, the TI Trio, which is a top five IM for me. And I love this IM, I own this. I love the bass here. I love the treble presentation here. I love the softness around edges of notes, which make vocals be very beautiful. Uh, so I love the TI Trio, but again, I wouldn't take this on an island because I feel like the treble is a little more lively and it can be somewhat present and perhaps overly present on certain tracks if they're not well recorded and on certain sources. So the Dita Perpetua would be my desert island pick. It is just the perfect blend of having a luscious mid-range, having very nice tonal character to the bass while having a fair amount of slam and punch and a lovely treble. So the other reason why you should go with graphs is that if you look at the graph of the Perpetua, it doesn't look like it has a lot of air, but it does sound airy and spacious and holographic with 
adequate air on instruments and all that right so take my word for it if you can this im will not exactly sound the way it graphs other than the fact that it does graph like it's relaxing so that's there okay a quick word on the unboxing because i wanted to cover it in one video so the leather case that i'm using with the perpetua is this fine italian grain leather uh, um, it has the detail logo on top it's made of a single sheet of leather it's luxurious it's ergonomic it holds i am with my thick cable pretty nicely and uh, i like this it's stylish and all that this is the inner box of the Dita Perpetua. It does have a white outer box and it even came with the Dita Perpetua carrying case. This is how it opens up. You remove these bands and you get, you know, a bevy of stuff, stickers, manuals, what have you, warranty cards, a lot of stuff here. Uh, the stock cable is very picturesque. It's very pretty. Um, it's got this translucent thing going on and you can re-terminate the plug so they call it the awesome plug system and you can re-terminate it and you have other choices of terminations so this just comes off like this or you can i'll just put it back in um, this cable is extremely functional and it sounds wonderful but i think it has a little bit of memory of course you get your usual share of key rings and stuff um, these are the other jacks you can re-terminate your stock cable with. And it comes in this very cool case, metal case, that you can remove using this air pressure release system, this valve system, and it will hold your IMs in a sturdy way. So you get two IM carrying cases, one leather and one metal. So that's for the unboxing. The unboxing is phenomenal, guys. The Dita Perpetua is flying under the radar, and I happen to think that a lot of you will like this IM because it's just, just a wonderful, bassy, relaxing listen. Give it a shout if you have heard it, if you have listened to it. Drop impressions or just let me know in the messages section of this video what your opinion is and how you liked it or you might not have liked it. I love it. If you have not listened to it, do check it out. Because a lot of you like the next best thing. A lot of you like the single dynamic driver flavor. A lot of you like the dynamic driver timbre. Because if you're like me, if you don't like the balanced armature timbre, this IM is definitely sort of flying under the radar. And it deserves a lot more love than it's getting. That's it, guys. Check out the Dita Perpetua. It is an awesome IM. I highly recommend it. It's an A-plus IM for me. And I hope you get to put your ears to it. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one. Bye-bye.